If we look at some of her photos from four years ago, there is much more femininity to her. And here, her features are a little bit more comparable to what they are now, but I wouldn't say she was at the point where you double take her as a man. But even in this photo, again, roughly from four years ago, people are still commenting on the fact that she's absolutely ruined her looks. Or I guess there was actually comments that she had deleted because the only comment that stands is the one referring to those comments. Be crazy. Again, if we look at her in 2020, people are saying that this is dramatic masculinization from the use and abuse of anabolic steroids. But to be honest, she's not far off from what most people would consider an attractive woman, especially myself. And if you actually listen to her, she still sounds very feminine, not suffering from the typical teenage boy cracking voice or the Anavar Barbara kind of voice. Hi, everybody. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the importance of being regimented in off season. So I've obviously documented on here my off season and how I built up calories, how we did that kind of as a slow process, many cuts, building up again, uh, just to make sure that we built up calories nice and high so that when we came to prep, uh, we'd be in a good position kind of food wise. At least yet. It's not yet. It's probably worth noting that around this time, she actually liked to appear as if she liked to be feminine. Even on stage, you can see she maintained quite a feminine appearance and facial features. And just so that we're clear, she won her pro card in 2018 looking like that too, albeit in the bikini class, but it clearly didn't take a drastic amount of drugs for her to become wildly successful. Obviously, outside of the obligatory bikinis that you have to wear as a bikini competitor, she was wearing sports bras, leggings, shorts, showing her tummy, showing the whole bits like people like to see on Instagram apparently. And she's even seemingly enjoying dressing herself up, wearing a dress, looking nice out on a weekend. Like, you know, most women do. And these are the same photos on the same year that she happened to win her pro card. And to be honest, she looks very, very normal and likely had only just started to touch PEDs or maybe not even at all at this point. Now, just to have a timeline laid out, let's look at how she's changed over the short period of of time that has been from then to now. It took me a while, but I'll get one of the earliest photos she's got online dating all the way back to 2013. And I know what you're thinking. Hold it. This is fucking creepy. You're right. It is. The internet's for everyone, baby. You can look up anything. By all means, you can even look up anything about me do your deeds. But look, this is like seriously the kind of girl a Netflix drama would cast as their cheerleader or something. Now this in 2015, this is her competing in 2017, which I previously mentioned, again, looking very normal, very feminine. And it seems around 2016 is where she started to compete, or at least where she started to co-posting about it publicly. And it's pretty obvious from her start that she has an amazing foundation for the sport in virtually any category. And clearly, with all the times that she has actually competed and stayed in the sport, she obviously loves bodybuilding. It's not something for the faint of heart, and if you really love it, that's just about the only thing that's going to keep you in it. But I'm here to show you how significantly she's changed over just a few years. And I might be sounding very critical or even a bully in a certain kind of way. Oh, I've been having so much fun with this binge eating disorder of mine. It's so exciting. Watch this. But I promise I'm not being that way. I respect this person and I respect bodybuilders at large. I think they're great people and I don't have anything against them. But what I do like to do is leverage educational moments and talk about things very publicly and not just try to cover them up or hide them, but more so expose them as they actually are. And again, it is not a form of besmirching someone. It's not a form of being rude to someone. It is just a form of explaining something that is publicly out there on the internet for people to see. Now, you might be wondering who I'm referring to, and this is... Hi, I'm Megan Sylvester. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an IFBB Pro Figure competitor. Um, well, used to be bikini. Um, won my pro card in bikini and actually transferred over to figure this off season. Been in off season now for around 16 months and looking to start prep in around seven weeks. So you just heard that there. We're going to be covering a figure athlete who is known as Meg Sylvester. I'm not even going to try to say the last name because as you know, I cannot pronounce last names, first names, or middle names on this channel for my life. Balake, where is Balake at? No Balake here today. My name is Blake. Are you out of your goddamn mind? There was a snippet on one of her videos from 2020 where she's obviously not married to Cuba yet, who she's currently married to and is another professional bodybuilder. And the reason is she has two surnames now, but hadn't had it back then. But clearly she still suffered some of those androgenic side effects, developing secondary male characteristics during this period of time. Time do I train? 
Um, I like to train around four, five-ish. Obviously, sometimes it differs when I am actually working, just because I can't help it if, if I've got to train at different times due to work, depending on meetings. But at the moment, it's around three to four o'clock. But what if I told you that is nowhere near as far as she's pushed things? No, you, you see, today in 2024, this is her. So obviously, that was my... Um, pre intra and post workout on an upper body day you've also or you are also <laughs> going to see a video of me posing post workout i am definitely the leanest that i've ever been at this point in prep um if i was to say that getting lean twice in a year was wasn't hard mentally i would be lying Whole Holy shit. Again, let me make this very clear. This video is not shaming women. This video is not shaming female bodybuilders. This video is talking about something very explicit about how people try to push their physical limits using performance enhancing drugs, of which I talk a lot about on this channel and try to educate people on for a safer use in a sense that's actually going to be applicable. And also, I want to say she looks fucking insane. She even qualified for the Olympia this year and is one of the best of the best. So I'm, I'm not trying to talk shit because I'm going to be there too. And I'm not not trying to get my ass kicked by a female who is far more jacked than I am. Nah, anta mo so mo daro. So with all of this being said, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but this clearly isn't something you see every single day. And I'm inclined to believe that she didn't even know herself how far this would get until it was far too late. Clearly, we all know that female bodybuilding is a very dangerous side of the sport. There is a lot of permanent side effects that can be had from using androgenic substances or anabolic substances. I don't think typically we often see much more than the anavar voice we've probably all grown quite familiar with. And to clarify what that that means we're talking about male characteristics being developed in females from the use of androgens. Your vocal cords and vocal folds will expand, develop edema, and even grow in response to the presence of androgens, and that will cause a much, much deeper voice in females. Number one thing for me, my voice was really tough when like a TikTok video would hit off and there would be like a thousand comments saying like, are you on steroids? Are you a tranny? Are you a smoker? And I was like, wow, nobody even listens to the content. I had a conversation with Alex where I said like, I hate that this bothers me. It doesn't change what I'm doing, but I am bothered by this. And he said, well, does part of you think it's true? Do you think your voice is weird? Well, it is kind of weird. It's deep. And he's like, so then why do you blame them for thinking this? Because even if we look at the top of women's bodybuilding, the current Miss Olympia is looking bigger than most male bodybuilders, and she certainly sounds a lot like a 15-year-old boy going through some puberty. But she, for the most part, still looks like a woman. But yeah, so small things though, right? Really small things. Theragun, especially if you got somebody who can help you get to those hard-to-reach places. Yeah, like sometimes that's the easiest. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled. I'll go for the three-hour massage. I'm like, you know what? You know, I'm going to stretch. But yeah, if you can get to those places that are kind of difficult for me to get to, I will just sit there and enjoy the three hour. Well, I shouldn't say enjoy because it's not a very comfortable experience. So if we come back to Meg, it seems like she hasn't really put any preventative measures in place to keep herself from getting stuck with this to begin with. There was no appropriate cycle design, maybe. I'm a bit confused here, but something was wrong. I mean, this kind of virilization isn't something that you see every day. Virilization being another word for the development of secondary male characteristics. So let's just get started with the before and after comparisons. This is 2015 versus 2024. This is about a decade apart. She's currently 30 years old in the after picture, and I tried to get photos that were as comparable as possible, but unfortunately, she used to wear makeup very often, and now she doesn't seem to do so as often, nor does she pose in the same way in most of her photos. But you get the idea. The obvious point to make is that her skin looks a lot drier, and essentially very aged, and her jawline, specifically her mandibles, look like they've experienced expanded quite a bit. But I think the most notable feature change that you might even notice is actually her brow ridge and how far it's extended between these two pictures, which usually is only a very male-like feature. It's also, and I'm sorry to say this, one of the only distinguishable features from humans and our current species, Homo sapiens, to other previous species like your Neanderthals or apes. What a wonderful day! 
So what the fuck happened to the changes in her physiology and literally her bone structure from using PEDs? Well, besides some extremely poor developed female PED protocols, I would argue that there is more going on here and she likely didn't realize until it was far too late. Now, if you look at her comments, some people are suggesting that it's as if someone else had brought this upon her. And if you haven't already realized, thanks to her surname and of course my pre-mentioning of this, she is now married to Kuba Colleen, since 2021 at least. He's another IFBB pro, pretty successful in his own right, owns his own gym, runs his own coaching company, makes some good cash too. Now, I have definitely some deep investigative skills using the internet, as we all do, and again, if anyone tries to say that this isn't fair or this is bullying or whatever, you can look up my entire past. It's all there on paper. Like, I encourage people to do that. But what I'm trying to get at is I'm using everything that I can to create a timeline of events and use these people as tools for education. Now, the first time they met is not very concrete, but the first time we see Kuba in Meg's profile is 2018 or at least right around there, which is the time that he earned his pro card as well. There was also a weird photo of him posing with his dick in a sock. Pretty common within bodybuilding for sure. Unfortunately, I can't really say what the relationship was before they actually became a legitimate couple. Typically, you see coaches ending up hooking up with their clients, especially if they're training them in person because they are generally people who get along and have the same interests. But it looks more like his coaching company started to develop and his business at large started to get successful once the two have already been together, which his gym Ultraflex is now one of the highlight gyms in the UK. Besides the point, obviously as a coach and her partner, he is now one of the people guiding her protocol use, hopefully guiding her to a successful career, no doubt, or at least bare minimum acting as a form of accountability or a second opinion. I'm sure that with the two of them, it might be more collaborative than one person as a coach and client. Maybe it's just a team in a certain sense, but that doesn't point away from the fact that he still has some responsibility to point her in the right direction of her protocol use and definitely point her away from the wrong direction. Now, obviously we don't know about her lab work or medical history or any of this stuff, nor do we know anything revolving around her past circa 2020. So this isn't necessarily to say that she's at a major risk with what she's taking. She very well may not be. She could be practicing a very safer use model. But at the same time, there's clearly a large amount of virilization happening here that could have been entirely avoided if changed in a little bit of protocol use. Obviously, it couldn't entirely have been avoided as she is an Olympia caliber athlete, but at least it could have been avoided to a point of making you look like you missed the last evolutionary update. How dare you? For real though, I'm not trying to bull anyone. I know I jab at jokes, but I think they make the content interesting. <laughs> What I do want to say, though, is she's awesome, right? And I'm not trying to bismarch anything that she's done. This is something that she probably only realized until it was too late. And then by that point, she had passed the threshold of being able to stop. So maybe the decision was just to keep going. Because truthfully, once these kind of cosmetic changes actually happen, they are impossible to get rid of. Even the vocal changes, those vocal folds as they adapt and grow to the androgens, don't change once you get off of the androgens. They stay exactly as they are. And while it seems that Meg definitely thinks that these effects are worth her career trajectory, which obviously, given the things that she's done, very potential to say that this is worth it. But I think for thousands of women out there to absolutely not get obliterated and throw their femininity away because some gym junkie told them to take a bunch of Anavar. Anavar should be the first and the only thing that you take. And Primo Bolin, and who else knows, just to get in a little bit more shape or do a bikini competition, which trust me, I've heard women in bikini competitions taking trend before. I know I've said it, and I'm gonna say it again for like the 50th time on this channel, but the survivorship biased on social media is really critical to think about. Because for every person that you see blow up with success due to anabolic usage, there is also three times as much people who had ultimate failures from anabolic usage who had the worst possible outcomes from anabolic usage. And the selection bias that you see on your TV screen or your telephone or what the fuck ever you're watching content with is usually just a selection based on what people have chose to watch, which are going to be the people who are not male formed, who are not disgusting, who are not acne ridden, who are not totally virilized. They're going to be people who are appealing to watch. There are likely tens of thousands of people suffering in the shadows who can't speak out 
about these things because they're too embarrassed to or just simply have to deal with them for the rest of their lives because of one misguided cycle all because they were romanticizing drugs due to social media influencers talking about how great they are either on drugs or not talking about the drugs leading people to believe that drugs are the only way they can achieve the lifestyle or physique that that person might have it's a really sad reality to be honest it's a it's a really really fucking sad reality because most people can redeem themselves from these effects but they all stop far too late and whether you decide to join the dark side is entirely your decision i'll never turn to the dark side but I could give you a few pieces of advice before you do. First of all, watch my first cycle video if you're a male. Critical, critical, critical. Second of all, if you can, do the prerequisite research and hire someone who knows what the fuck they're doing. Not the gym bro, not someone who just tells you to hop on a cycle right away, but someone who actually knows what they're doing. That way you can mitigate both the mental effects, the aesthetic effects, and the health effects that might be incurred if used misappropriately. I don't even fucking think that's a word, but I said it. And you know, we have a Discord down below which is a really helpful tool for people who are looking for some advice. Now, of course, these things have to be legal within your country, as they are in mine, but you know the spiel. And also, I want to say that if you are a female out there who is attempting or discussing or possibly using anabolic androgenic steroids like Anavar, Primabolin, Nandrolone, Trenbolone, any of them out there, because I know many females who don't even know what they're taking, but if you're taking something that's an injectable oil or a pill that's called Anavar or Oxymethylone or any of these things, you need to realize that this is a male hormone. And the female converting to male dosage of hormones or testosterone it's about 60 milligrams per week so if a female wants to convert into a male all she's got to do is jab 60 milligrams of testosterone in her per week but most females take anivar at 10 milligrams per day you can do the math that's 70 milligrams per week which is an androgen which is akin to testosterone which is going to masculinize you to a point in which you become male given enough time so please realize that there is many more things under the sun that you can use in which are not androgenic or male hormones in nature they are peptides they are the various other compounds that would be much more efficacious and not such a deleterious shithole for your health anyways if you like this video comment down below and while you're down there hit the subscribe button it's free it helps youtube tell me to say hey you can go into the algorithm now because enough people like your content to say do the good things by liking and commenting and subscribing so we're going to recommend it to more people and hopefully they like comment and subscribe so i'm supposed to say it at the end of every video per youtube suggestions and here i am doing that or just click one of these videos you know watch one of the ones up here and keep consuming my content consuming my content